I loved you, but you didn't accept this. Your love is conditional. I can only love Debbie if she takes me to the United States. There we go. I couldn't have said it better myself. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Osama has lost control and he's scrambling for a way to try and keep Debbie in Morocco. So you don't know squat, man. You don't know squat. Talk to the hand because I've heard so much BS coming from you. This entire season has been building up to this showdown. We could all see it coming from a mile away. Debbie and Osama have barely had a moment of peace since Debbie arrived in Morocco. But before we dive into the grand finale, let's rewind back to the start of this episode. Last day I uh, had the fight with Debbie because she thought like oh, I want to use her for the green card to go to the US and to go to my home and take her to Gates and go. What a strange thing for Debbie to think, Osama. I wonder what could have given her that impression. Our plan is you will come here and bring me to the USA and I will go to work there and we start our life there. If you don't accept this, we can stop all this. Yeah, we all know that Osama seems to have a knack, a sneaky habit of always worming his way back into Debbie's good books. But he's gonna need some serious help with this one. So he turns to his sister and best friend, Asma, for some advice. <laughs> Relax guys, come on, you're acting like you don't live in the same house. It's as if they haven't seen each other in years. Do you really expect me to believe that Osama didn't speak to his sister last night? Like they didn't already come up with a game plan for what to say? Look, the truth is, these two are clearly very close siblings. It's no secret that Osama is an odd guy. He's a loner, he's an outcast. But Asma has always been the one to help him. Asma is just the person who knows me the best. She tried to, to, uh, to make me understand how women minds work and how women hearts work. What? <laughs> what is this? What exactly do you mean demystifying how a woman's mind and heart works? It's kind of worrying to me that he needs to take lessons on that. I mean, I get that he doesn't have much experience with the opposite sex, right? I get that. But this has nothing to do with gender, Osama. If you lie to someone consistently, if you lead them on and betray their trust, I think you'll find they won't take it well, regardless of their gender. Are you sure we're talking about the same person here, Asma? Because I'm not buying that story. It's going to be fascinating to see how Osama and his sister try to spin this, try to do some damage limitation to make it seem like Osama is innocent or just misunderstood. Remember, this is a guy who's knowingly misled Debbie. He's admitted as much. And when she brought that up, he called her mentally ill. So let's just see how he conveys what happened last night to his sister, who already thinks that Osama can do no wrong. The way that Osama frames this as pressuring is very telling. He's the one that's created confusion by not being transparent with his plans. But when it all caught up with him, he now feels pressure and stress. It's a feeble excuse. But his official stance is that he just couldn't deal with that stress. That's what caused him to lash out. Notice how Osama doesn't admit to any wrongdoing. He doesn't say he was wrong for calling Debbie crazy. Instead of holding his hands up and admitting his mistakes, he's more comfortable making excuses. The stress got the better of him. He just couldn't control himself. It's a terrible excuse, but this is a common tactic of his. 
emotions. He likes to paint his own emotions as being totally natural and normal, while blaming other people for triggering him. So on one level, he seems like he recognises that he has no self-control, but he uses this to avoid blame and try and shift it onto others. <laughs> He's acting like Debbie wanting him to move to Rabat is a surprising expense. But again, he's conveniently overlooking the fact that this was the plan all along. And I've got news for you, Osama. I don't think Debbie was expecting you to pick up the bill. She would have gladly paid double just to move out of your family home. She knows that you're a poet without a job. And she knows that you live with your parents. <laughs> the fact that he's now trying to say it's because he doesn't have money is laughable. <laughs> A quick search of the rental market in Rabat shows that apartments go for between three to five hundred dollars a month. I'm willing to bet that's probably less than what Debbie paid for all the extra luggage she brought to Morocco, thinking that she'd be staying there permanently. Still, money is just an excuse for Osama, but it seems to be enough to convince his sister. That's quite a revealing confession, and I don't doubt the fact that that was probably always Osama's plan. But it was never Debbie's plan. The truth is, Asma is always going to give her brother the benefit of the doubt. She's going to take his side, but she hasn't been given an accurate or full picture of what's actually happened. Ah, oh, sisterly love, hey? <laughs> I guess there's nothing like being badly treated by your brother, but still lowering the bar for him anyway. Sure, I get that it's normal for Asma to want to cover for her brother, but her choosing to brush his behaviour under the rug isn't helping anything at all. He'll do wrong and get angry and act like some stranger, but then he knows how to apologise. He's like a professional at apologies. It's a shame there's no money to be made as a professional apologiser. It might be the only job Asama's actually suited for. Look, on a serious note, this is agonising. Debbie is still hanging on to the idea that there's a good side and a bad side to Osama. But so far in Morocco, it's been all bad. It feels like Debbie is desperate to see the good in people. And it's for that reason that she's been sucked back in for a meeting with Osama. They've agreed to meet at a local cafe. Hi. Do you, want for a drink? Do you have any Texas margarita? We have a tea and we have a coffee. Coffee and tea only, no absinthe. No. Poor Debbie seems desperate for a drink, but unfortunately, the waitress's expression says it all. She's going to have to try and calm her nerves with a tea or a coffee. But she's not the only one who's feeling the pressure. Ahead of the meeting, a reflective Asama also admits that he's very nervous. For me right now, I'm nervous a little bit. When Osama arrives, the atmosphere is incredibly awkward. He towers over Debbie for what seems like an eternity, then comes out with... How are you doing? How do you think I'm doing? There's no small talk or niceties. They get straight into the thick of things. Osama sits there in silence, waiting for Debbie to lead the conversation. There's no apology from Osama. Instead, when things get tough, as we've seen before this season, Osama just gets defensive. You made me feel despised. I told you this before, that when I am angry, you don't have to care about what I'm saying. Just give me the space and time, and after I can't talk. This is totally dishonest, not to mention it's textbook manipulation. He's putting the responsibility on Debbie for her reaction rather than himself for his own behaviour. 
he expects her to just block out all of his words when he's angry. Like, that doesn't work in real life, Asama. And it doesn't make sense. How about you stop saying mean, hurtful, insulting things to the woman you claim is your soulmate? Maybe try that instead. It's almost as if Asama is asking to be treated like a child, but his tantrums have an impact. And considering he's a poet, he seems awfully reluctant to take ownership of his words. I can't promise you that I will not be angry again. You get angry sometimes too. So it's our nature. Which is true, Asama. Yes, everyone gets angry. But what's not true is you presenting yourself as some kind of incredible Hulk. You're not fighting some kind of superhuman, uncontrollable rage. Just like every other adult in the world, you need to learn how to not let your emotions spill out of control. That is just a part of growing up. When I am angry, I don't even focus or think of what I'm saying. Just when I am angry. What's become increasingly obvious over the past few weeks is that Osama has just been pandered to his entire life. He's a big, spoilt child. His parents both seem very understanding of his artistic ambitions, not to mention his lack of financial independence. Even his relationship with a woman from the other side of the world, who happens to be 43 years older than him. As his sister told us earlier, when he gets angry, as it seems he often does, he's used to being forgiven and not having any consequences. And it seems like Osama expected this to continue through to his relationship with Debbie. But Debbie isn't his mother. She's supposed to be his partner. And sooner or later, he's going to have to realise that for partnerships to work, you have to take into account other people's feelings too. Sorry, Asama, but outside your little bubble, the world does not revolve around you. If I talk to you in that day exactly, you will thought that I just want you for the visa, for no, the money. No, no, maybe you always think like this. There's a pattern of disturbing gaslighting here. Whenever they have a big fight, Asama pins the blame on Debbie's emotions, her quote-unquote mental problems, or this time, how she's apparently paranoid. Even when it's clearly his actions, Osama finds a way to argue that he was just anticipating how Debbie would react. So it's really all her fault. Frankly, the level of emotional manipulation here is astounding. And all of this comes just moments after he said he shouldn't be held responsible for his own anger. Now, Debbie does admit that they once spoke about going to America, but that it was never intended to be permanent. But it seems like this was all the encouragement that Osama needed. In the future, like next year, you can come and visit my kids and come back. You see, this is the mistake you did because this wasn't our plan. Debbie's patience amazes me because she seems able to listen to the same nonsense again and again while remaining remarkably calm. That speaks volumes about her character. But even while exuding pure zen, it reaches a point where even Debbie looks like she's finally had enough. You'll never believe in my love. I did believe in your love. What do you no. think made me come all the way to Morocco and move? No. Because of your love, I the believed same. in you. The victim act is starting to wear thin, Osama. It was Debbie that did all the heavy lifting. This is a woman who sacrificed her entire life in the US just for you. Yet he dismisses all of this. For him, that's not enough to prove that Debbie believed in his love. Sorry, but who's the paranoid one now? Love for me is something holy. Not when probably happens, I run away. So this is affects my, my heart too. Day after day after day, it makes me love her less. What? <laughs> Which one is it, Asama? Are you saying that love's eternal and unconditional, or is it dependent on how you treat people? It seems like he can't hold a consistent position on anything. He's always tripping over himself, sometimes, as we just saw, in the same sentence. If Debbie doubting you is making you love her less, imagine how she feels every time you get frustrated and throw everything you can at her. And yet, remarkably, she's still sitting there willing to hear you out. I love you, but you didn't accept this. Your love is conditional. I can only love Debbie if she takes me to the United States. This is what we've all been waiting to hear. Osama created this wedge through his own ultimatum. 
He said to Debbie, either she was going to help him or they'd part ways. He gambled big on the fact that she'd give in, but he pushed it too far. And now he realizes there is no coming back from this. No matter what I always said now, it's too late. I feel sad. Debbie might be sad, but Osama's right. It is too late. No matter what he says, it doesn't matter at this point. Debbie has had the wake up call that she needed and all credit to her because unlike many on this show, she's confident enough in herself to know she can do so much better. She hasn't got time for any more of this BS. Talk to the hand because I've heard so much BS coming from you. So I'm going to go on without you. This feels like closure. Her mind is made up and there's no going back. Debbie leaves Morocco with a clear conscience. And yes, I agree that she was very naive. She was sold a dream. She fell for all of Osama's lies. But now she clearly sees it was all BS. And that is enough for her to pack her bags and head home. And I hope she never looks back. But I'm not gonna let the bad guy win. Osama don't win in this. Debbie's gonna win in this.